Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now, I haven't tied a Mike Vala streamer in a while, so I'm thinking I'm about overdue for this. So today I picked one from his classic streamer, Flybox. Check out this book if you haven't, great book. This one is called The Hogue Favorite. Now it's a pretty elegant pattern, but it does have a couple of tough techniques in it. I mean, first off, if you've ever tied feather wing streamers, you know they can be pretty challenging. And this one's got four feathers on it. Plus, it's got an all tinsel body. So any long streamer that the body is all tinsel, that can be a little bit challenging. It's hard to get all the lumps out and make a perfectly smooth body. Now, if you try this fly and it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Put it in your fly box. I'm sure it's gonna fish and then keep practicing. Maybe your second or third one will be just a little bit better. So this one tonight, it's a pretty cool streamer. I can't wait to fish it. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Hogue Favorite. You can see, quick critique of this one, we've got a little bit of lump right there in the body, and then I think the head is just slightly too big. So we'll see if we can make this one better. I'm gonna start off with a size six. This is a 5X long streamer hook. So this is a pretty beefy pattern. And you could use a 6 odd or even a 140 or 210 denier thread. I'm gonna keep it at an 8 odd, And I think it gives me a little bit more flexibility on this. So put a base down, touch and turns all the way back. So we're gonna put a, a bead of glue down here in just a minute. Let's go a little bit farther back right here where we're going to catch in our tinsel and start the body. So I'm using a large, this is a Danville Mylar, uh, the silver and gold. And what I've done, cut a little slant to it. So I, I want the smallest of tie-in points possible that are that's going to hold it. So I'm going to kind of bring it in from the bottom here and I'm catching it in at an angle so that hopefully that first wrap I won't have a, you know, a lump. So we got this caught in and the goal here is to keep that underbody as smooth as possible. So open wraps with your thread back up to the front where we're going to finish the tinsel. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put a quick half hitch right here just to keep any of that from unraveling. Now what you'll want to do in this next step, this is optional but you know, I do recommend it. Take some of your head cement and just put a bead down through the whole length of it. This head cement is a little bit thick, probably needs to be thinned out, but just kind of wrap this around. This will help this tinsel be more permanent. And if you get too much, don't worry about it. Just take it off with your, with your finger or a Kleenex or the bead might push up as we wrap this. And if that's the case, then just wrap it, uh, wipe it off at the end. So this first wrap is probably the most important if you want to keep this flat underbody all the way up. So just touching, more than touching turns, overlapping turns maybe by half and pulling fairly tight on your tinsel as you wrap it up and just take your time and take it all the way up to the front. Okay, when you get up to the front, get a good two or three or four securing wraps. I think that body is fairly lump free. Now, if yours is not and you end up with a lot of lumps, hey, don't worry about it. I'm sure it's still gonna fish and just try to be more careful the next time. You saw the one that I had in the vise at the start of this video, it had one big lump right there. So it happens and a tinsel body feather wing streamer is not the easiest of flies to tie. A couple of advanced techniques here. So let's do the throat next. Green strung saddle hackle. I just pulled out a couple of chunks of fibers, about this many right here, and let's pull it over. It's a pretty substantial throat. 
So I flip it over in my vise, put a couple of wraps right here, and then check my position. I think that's going to look fine. Just make sure it's coming off the, the bottom of the hook like you want. That's close enough. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this with two or three more wraps. And now we can snip off this excess. Okay, that throat is going to be fine right there. Now for the wings. The underwing is red, so some cheap red, strong saddle hackle. These don't have to be good feathers. They're really just to give it the hint of red underneath. So I've got two right here, just some of the small tips. This is going to give it that hint of color under the, the overwing, which is going to be a, a grizzly. So that is a little bit long right there. So what I'll do, just, just pull a, a few more of these fibers off to give us a, a better tie-in point. Okay, I think that's going to be a decent length right there. And I'm going to put two not tight wraps. Okay, that's three just medium wraps right there, and then I'm going to check my position. See, look at that. Those are coming off the side. Not exactly what I want. So that's why we just put medium wraps to begin with. And let's see right there. Okay, that looks just a little bit better. So I'm going to hold it tight and put a few tight wraps right here. Check it one more time. Okay, that's a little bit better. That's enough. The grizzly wings overwing will compensate for that being off at all. And I keep, this keeps pulling down on me in the vise because it just barely, barely got the hook in that vise at all. Should probably just back it up in there a little bit more. Okay, now I took some some of my dry fly grizzly cape and just pulled off some of the, it's the softer feathers from it. Uh, I pulled them from, you know, the side of the cape and they've got that little bend to them. So I'm gonna make sure the bend is toward the hook. I'm gonna tie these in one at a time. And let's see, what you might want to do is just pull a few extras off the bottom that way, see that? That might make it lay just a little bit easier when you tie it in. So I think we can get away with that right there. Let's put a couple wraps and check it. Okay. I think that, yeah, that's gonna be okay. So go ahead and secure it with tighter wraps right there. And now we can snip off this excess right here and we've got one more to go. So another feather just exactly like that last one. Pretty much the same size. Line your tips and that's where I want it. But again, I'm gonna go ahead and pull just a couple of these off the bottom. It might make for a little bit cleaner look in the end. So with your tips aligned, your thread on or your feather on, Let's do just a couple of loose wraps and then check this one. Okay, that, that front one right there, I might have pulled a few too many off of that front, but you know, that's okay. It's gonna show a little bit more red. I think that'll be fine. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna secure these feathers right here all the way, and then we can clean up and build our head. And with this ADOT thread, it will take a few more wraps to build a nice big size streamer head. If you were using a 6 aught or a thicker denier thread, it wouldn't take as many. So I think we're ready for a whip finish here. And a drop of head cement and I think we'll be good to go. So critique of this one, while this head is a bit smaller than the one we just did, I think it's uh, a little bit better, a little closer to the right size. And that grizzly hackle on the side closest to the camera, I might've stripped off too many feathers on the bottom. 
but this is definitely a fishable fly and it's a pretty cool looking pattern so uh, I'm gonna put some head cement on it and then put it in my streamer box but that's it my friends I appreciate you watching take care and we'll see you next time